guys will also kind of turn the world on to just how good Game & Watch was, right? We've seen Meister doing it at a top yeah. level for years, but Mia has something a little bit different. Yeah, and I think when you think about the character landscape of Ultimate, when there's one player doing big things with a the character, then it's like, oh, okay, well, we're still trying to get a feel of how good this character is, right? But when there's multiple players that are in that top 5, top 10, top 20 yep. with a specific character, then you start raising an eyebrow. Then yeah. you're like, wait, hold up, right? And I think Mia doing exactly that. Meister has always put Game & Watch on the map, but we're seeing a different type of Game & Watch, different type of style come into play as well in a different region at that and really showing off the potential of this character. And a lot of players are even, I'm starting to hear players say things like Game & Watch might be top five, top 10. And that is a, yeah. uh, in Fighter Pass 2 meta specifically, that is, <laughs> That's a very big jump. It's remarkable to hear something like that, right? Considering there's, what, I think 10 DLC characters, right? The fact that Game of Watch is better than a lot of them yeah. is kind of crazy, but he also has a really good matchup spread, right? Uh, yeah. Kazuya particularly really struggles against Game & Watch, and pretty much anyone without a sword does not enjoy fighting this character. And even those with swords probably don't like it too much. That said, Mia running into Cola nice and early here, probably not the bracket he wanted to pull. Just Roy, despite probably being the shortest range of all the good sorties, he's so dangerous. He hits so hard. Game of Watch is incredibly light. He's going to die really early, but Cola has to hit him for that to even be a factor. And Mia's jungle game is unparalleled. Yeah, and I, I always like to view Game & Watch as an anti-meta character, right? Uh, even ledge trapping, you see this jab ledge trapping, it's very hard to react to Game & Watch's normal getup because he's a 2D character and he just, just goes from ledge immediately into normal getup and yeah. has some of the best out of shield game in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The Nair off the top is oh going to do God. the trick here. Mia showing off the flag as well, but... Oh, but immediately answering back with the forward tilt. But there's so many characters in Ultimate that want to mash on your shield and get so much out of it. Game & Watch, just a wall of thorns in that sense. You don't want to knock on that shield. No, absolutely not. Even if you do have a sword, the scoop on the trampoline is just so wide. Otherwise, though, Game & Watch is out of shield. Kind of shit. So if, if you can stays, outrange it. If yeah. you can outrange it. Very quick, but you the main, the main thing is to outrange it, right? Yeah, if Cole is able to stay at that max distance, right, which unfortunately for Roy is the sour spot of his sword, then he can get away with a few things. But right now we're just seeing Cola kind of struggle to get this chase down. Mia extending his lead so much up about 80% right here. Well, 79.8%, I guess, but uh, quick math. Now we got the ledge trap where oh. it seems almost impossible to get back from. Cola forced into the air dodge off stage. Mia's gonna be all over that. Some of the best edge guards, some of the best juggles, really just advantage state. He might be one of the best, period. Yeah, there's a oh! lot of things, but... <laughs> Dude, that's the Japanese air dodge. They don't directional air dodge into your face, they'll neutral air dodge. It, it's a little bit more calculated, yeah. if you will. Yeah, Harder yeah. to punish, but Cola ready for it nonetheless and getting a bunch of damage on top of that. The down air, oh, but watch it! Okay, does get back to the ledge here. Mio going for a grab into the immediate spot dodge. Tries to get the neutral on the follow-up, and there is that Game & Watch up air. So good at trapping your landing, and just you do a falling up air, and you just go ahead and put pressure that is going upward, but your character's falling downward, right? So it just naturally sets up for traps. Exactly. It's like uh, a Falco-Pillar combo on the go, right? <laughs> I'll take that pillar combo to go, please. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, large prize as well. <laughs> animal style. Animal style. Oh, up the up tilt. my God. Cola plays this game animal style, though. Yes. And no matter how good you are in these controlled situations, as Game & Watch, right, keeping your opponent in the air infinitely, right, the second he slips out of there, he's just going to hit you with some shit you've never seen in your life. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, that, that worked pretty well for him. Turning things around in a big way after he took me a second stock, it was just all his game. Yeah, and a lot of players and a lot of the spectators is really hyping up Mia for this event. I believe this is the second time Mia is competing outside of Japan, the first time being Scuff World Tour. So we'll see how Mia does again on NA soil. He also won Apex. Just oh, and that. Apex, my bad. Yeah, also won Apex as well. So third time, third time. Yep. Yeah. And pretty good results at both of those two events, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what he finished at Scuff World Tour, but first at Apex, definitely huge. You know, uh, didn't have the same like out of region attendance that an event like Battle of BC or Scuff World Tour would, but he still beat some really solid players to get there. Yeah, and even at Scuff World Tour, I believe one of his losses was like Spargo and stuff like that. So obviously uh, a lot of players lose Spargo. So. <laughs> yeah. No, no shame in that one. Uh, pretty much the other front runner for number one currently. Yes, uh, yes. Him and Akula really neck and neck for that position. 
All right, but Mia also wants to join in on that conversation. I mean, there, there's so many great players that are top two of each region, and, and most of them are here at this event, so it's really exciting. And if Cola is able to get a win on Mia, that's going to be huge for the resume for Cola. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Cola definitely a player who's had insane peaks, right? I think yeah. number eight in the world was his highest ranking, and it's been kind of a rough season for him recently. I think people yeah. are starting to figure out how to deal with Roy a little bit better and just exploit some of those weaknesses. But if he gets a win on Mia here, I think that's kind of the momentum he needs. Cola, a very emotional, momentum-based player in and outside of the individual game, right? Depending on how good he's feeling going into the day, that's going to dictate his performance. So a game one win here, already huge. But we're going to see Mia set the pace yet again, leading in the early parts of the game, just like he was last time. Yeah, and I love Mia's strategy with uh, Game & Watch. So obviously Nair is a preemptive hitbox that you kind of throw out. You get a lot out of it, and you're essentially spacing out like it's a sword move. Oh, wait, the directional Did air dodge. You wait. still have one mix here. Dude, is bucket breaking in the game? He I just pulled the bucket out in the corner, like in the blast zone to try to save himself. Yeah, I don't I'm not know too if it's sure in the if game. It, like breaks your momentum or not, or if he's just using it as a stall. Could be using it as a stall yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, but he did it right out of hit stun. So right, that, right. like, I, I don't think it would occur to him if there wasn't some kind of like direct purpose, but I agree, yeah, the ledge stall, you know, or the offstage stall could be huge too. So uh, either way, you know, some nerd, please hit us up on Twitter. Let us know <laughs> if bucket breaking survived this game in some capacity. Okay, but all these trades back and forth, two stock a piece here. I love the turnaround shield coming out from Cola, but the tr the trusty neutral air coming out for Mia, just again commanding so much airspace, just like this up air as well, right? And when Mia does condition you into going into shield or retreating from him, that's when the forward airs come out, because forward air is so great on block. The down air not going to get the re grab here. Mia just drifting back with this safe neutral air. Kind of a goofy mix up right there. You saw him do uh, drop off the ledge, double jump, air dodge back, and still made it back because obviously Game Watch is up B goes super far, but it threw Cola off. It got Mia back in the mix, and suddenly this is his opening, his edge guard, his ledge trap maybe. No. Okay. Wow. Cola going to break free somehow through the storm of bacon right there. One of the most imposing ledge traps in the game. It feels like there's no answer sometimes, but just a quick spot dodge got him out, got him the stock, and yet again, Cola looking like he's poised to take this game. He had to make a huge comeback to do it in the first game and uh definitely a less huge comeback but still started off trailing here oh no drag wow. down back air into another back air because why not i mean cover so much multi is just covering around that ledge and really mia just needs to trade with one hit on that roy up b or just catch the double jump does exactly that to keep this game even what a beautiful Ooh. fall through the platform into the up air getting a ton of damage here just controlling the center area of smashville which is probably why mia opting to go for the stage look at the control in this area right here like how do you get through that right yeah i mean shout out to coney his, his favorite term the house above you yes right but when you have a vertical projectile like Game & Watch, like Mega Man, right? It's a very rare asset in Smash, but man, it is so annoying to fight through the platform. And we're going to see the forward tilt come through. Wow, this time it's Mia pulling off the comeback. Cola was leading, two stocks to one, but it didn't matter. Did not face this kid at all. And we've talked about young players, you know, mentality, how strong are you when you're down or when you're pushed to your limit. Right. And Mia, I think, really does kind of echo that MK Leo style of just not cracking. Yeah, yeah, and uh, when when you're playing a character like Game and Watch as well, you, you can get so much out of certain situations. So I think Mia having extreme faith in his character. The last time I talked to Abadongo um, near Kagura B10, he said that Shuton and Mia both think that Game and Watch is top five character in the game. So Mia has a lot of faith in his own character. Oh, yeah, I I feel like you have to when you win so much, right? It's like, yes. well, obviously this character's good if I keep winning. Yeah, I think that, that kind of mentality, too, helps you improve a lot because you're never going to blame your character, right? If you think your character's top five, you shouldn't be blaming your own character because it's obviously good enough. If you don't think your character's top five, why are you playing them? That's just me, though. True. <laughs> I'm a, a big tier list enjoyer <laughs> slash abuser. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Big same, big same. And you, you got to when you're trying to compete at this level of bracket, right? Yep. And, you know, we do see some low tier character runs here and there, but at, especially at a tournament like Battle of BC, we'll see if that happens here because the, the talent pool is just so thick and when we say thick talent pool well they're also playing very very strong characters too oh she thick <laughs> <laughs> talking about her talent pool obviously obviously <laughs> anyway we got a pretty even scrap yet again i mean even in games relatively even in percents but it's gonna be cola catching mia reaching at the ledge there that whiff dash grab gonna be a death sentence for him and now this is uh very doable for Cola. He just has to get some of these openings, establish that extra credit, because Mia is so good at ripping the lead away from you. Yeah, once Game Watch gets a lead, the damage 
comes easy with Game & Watch. Ga uh -huh. Like, damage is almost, I don't want to say it's free, but <laughs> it's almost guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get that down throw, you're good for 50, 60% minimum, right? Yeah. It's just landing the kill move, that final blow. Oh my god, and here we go, the guaranteed <laughs> ledge trap, <laughs> bacon into whatever the hell you want. This time it's going to be forward tilt, closing the door on Cola's first stock here, but still, you're Game & Watch, one of the lightest characters in the entire game, uh -oh. bro. A million uh, well, damage upcoming. <laughs> well, like you said, man, the damage comes easy, right? There's the 50. Yeah, and then downer to get back to the ground yep. so you can continue the juggle. Mia really showing up the drag down there into the up B as well. There's the bomb and just almost immediately back into the game here. And one thing that Abadongo stressed to me a lot when he thought about how strong this character is, he just says, a lot of things Game Watch almost does for you, right? The bacon ledge trapping, so strong yeah. and so effective. And things like up air juggles, there's the edge guard. Is it enough? Another upbeat, but the angle is high. The bomb has to connect. Oh the down God. air still not going to catch Cola on the way up. Cola finally tasting what the stage feels like to be on and gets a forward tail while he's at it. Bro, I feel like Mia just booby traps every corner of the screen. <laughs> it's like, oh, you got a bomb here. You got seven bacons here. Oh, also, there's a chair as soon as you get through it all, and you're dead. And I'm jabbing ledge roll, too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because why not? Oh, and you got close to me? Here's an up B. I, yeah. think, I thought you would enjoy that. Very thoughtful of you, Mia. Oh, and the key as well. The key to success, man. Getting him down, not even from a great distance, right? I think that's when the, the key is most effective, when it's not right. so telegraphed all the way at the top of the screen. And now we're seeing him start to bring this back. But Cola trying to shut it down. There we go. Two up airs. Nothing to follow. Uh -oh. oh, no. But suddenly it's going to be an even game, bro. The combos literally write themselves for this character. Yeah, and the way that Mia is setting up certain like up airs too, so you can get an up B follow up. Most other game watches might just go for double up air, but Mia understanding, hey, I want to actually use up B to fan him off stage and set up a forward air, so I force the double jump and stuff like that. It's those little things that Mia is optimizing about the character in terms of positioning and how to end the combo. Oh, the single jab into the prat ball there. Wow, amazing calling out the get up attack, just hovering slightly over it with the back air, getting the whiff punish, and suddenly, dude, Cola oh! is down in a big way. Both characters could die at any moment here, though. Of course, this is Game & Watch. He could just explode on one hit, but it's not going to happen. Cola unable to get close enough to him. And I don't know, man. Just the back and forth is so crazy. Again, we saw Mia on his last stock before Cola was. But as soon as he got his hands on him at zero, it was just nonstop damage. And again, I just have to shout out the way Mia is playing this character. So he uses the Nair right? The Nair and the Baron neutral to force you into like shield or defensive maneuver options and then starts dropping fares. When he stops dropping fares, the counter plays hit the bomb, right? Well, guess what Mia did just there? Threw out the forward air, drifted back, had caught, made Cola swing out the back air to swing at the bomb, but yep. the chair was buffered immediately and getting the whip punish on that fair. The way Mia is setting up these KO scenarios is phenomenal, amazing show off of what the character is capable of. He just gives you something to deal with at every corner and the second you thought you got through it, he has the next trap waiting for you, man. This yeah. guy's got a full field in Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> at all times, though. Yeah. I, it's kind of crazy. Obviously, you know, when this game came out, people weren't so hot on that bomb forward here, right? They're like, oh, I missed the credit card. The I credit missed card having, at, like, man. A, a good kill move, right? right? But nah, man. When It just took the right person to figure out how to use these new tools, and suddenly you got true block strings in the grab. You got all kinds of whiff punish setups because your opponent is forced to deal with it. Almost plays like an assist in some ways. Yeah, I was going to say, it feels like Game Watch is more of a setup character the way up air and forward air work, where they're yeah. like kind of set up trappy tools, and Mia is abusing that to the fullest here, and now with the lead here, game four. Cola needs some answers, and he needs them quick. The jab lock oh, into the offset, no. and it cobbles into Nair. Oh, my God. Dude, get out of here. That's a uh, ref. Uh, illegal move. <laughs> Yellow card on the field. Yeah, please, <laughs> for real. Up smash into neutral air and a ton of damage to follow. This one really getting away from Cola. He needs to figure out something and fast. This has been a set of comebacks, Charles, but I don't know if Cola has enough gas left in the tank. There's oh, oh my god. god. What? Whoa. Whoa. You can do it again? Okay. What a mash coming out from Cola. That that berry on the down smash is uh, very powerful. So incredible mash, but Mia just running it right back. Bro, you know the classic Cola pop off where he like catches the Holy Ghost and stomps around on stage and shit. He just <laughs> did that on his controller to yeah. get out of the ground right there. My god. But now he's down one stock to three. It is pretty much curtains at this point, unless Cola figures out something in a big way. You gotta start basic though and get this first stock off. Don't let it be a three stock after such a competitive set. Yeah, and I mean, Mia really showing off that anti-meta you know, qualities. We're talking about Game & Watch offstage situation here. Another bomb to catch the air dodge and a three stock to end that set. Cola looking so strong in the beginning, but Mia just firing back so powerful. And with all those reads and 
Man, I mean, towards the end, just making it look hopeless. Uh, it did. It looked and felt hopeless by the end of that. And I, I don't know what it was that, that Mia figured out, right? He was able to put Cola on ice, kind of slow him down, right? And uh, once that happened, it was he couldn't do anything. Yeah. I'll be honest, man. Yeah. It, enough juggles where you're getting up aired and then nared and then up beat and then up aired again, right? It really starts to eat away at your mentality. And uh, Cola, you know, that's a, a big thing for him, right? He's got to be feeling good to play good. Yeah, we're going to check out some of these replays, but Game & Watch is definitely one of those characters that are, I'll call it the downward spiral effect, where uh, when, yeah. when you lose the lead and you get hit once, it can just, it, it feels like it drains your mentality meter if there was one, right? Where it's just like, oh man, this is this is so rough. I'm still getting up aired. I'm still off stage. I'm still getting back and I'm still getting edge guarded. Even, even the berries and all that stuff. And Mia really just showcasing how powerful this forward air can be with Game & Watch when used with the conditioning of back air, of neutral air, and my goodness, it, it was it was great to see all these different setups, man. Like forward air into the immediate chair or forward tilt as yeah. well to catch someone trying to swing onto that forward air, it, it, the, the bomb is, is so strong. Yeah, they get stuck there and hit lag on the bomb, right? Exactly. It's, it's not insignificant, especially with a character like Roy, right who, there, yeah. when he hits his sweet spot, incurs additional hit lag, right? Yeah. So that gives Mia extra frame advantage, and he took full advantage of it. Man, but this game, once it got to game four, it felt completely helpless for Cola, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just like, oh, I figured out your pattern of landing or of dealing with my, my setup tools, right? So I'm just going to switch up my pattern a little bit, and I'm going to capitalize on the counterplay to that. Right. And that's why I think so many people struggled to beat Mia, especially the first time they play him, because they've never seen a game of watch like this, and his setups are just so polished, so elaborate. You don't get away with anything for free against this guy. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. All right, so we are going to jump in to some ad reads here. We're going to check it out. Oh, wait. Hold on. That's supposed to be on my phone. <laughs> I got you right now. <laughs> 